They are arrested for stealing vaccination booklets, sick leave forms, and other medical equipment. Suspect tortures Kanji businessmen's vehicles. And reopening of schools, a disaster waiting to happen. I'm Lorico Bullford, and welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. The government is still vexed over the recent PNC-funded rally in Brooklyn earlier this month, as the Minister of Governance, Gail Teixeira, is formally complaining to the US Congress and the international community as a whole. They are upset with how the rally portrayed the PPP as a set of racists. As such, she responded by saying, We're not racist, the PNC! Are the racist, claiming that the rally was full of misinformation. She also claimed that while the PPP has been doing all it can to have an inclusive government, the opposition is trying to be divisive and was even racist when they were in power. She cited the mass firings of state employees in 2015, claiming it to be solely race-based. Just like, you know, this opposition accused them of being race-based. Anyway, the President and the Prime Minister has already issued other statements about the Brooklyn rally in the past two weeks, so clearly someone's butthurt over it. Efforts are underway to update Guyana's mental health legislation. Nandalo said revamping the law has become necessary as the issue of incarcerating mentally ill people without the necessary help can no longer be encouraged. Psychiatry professionals at the Georgetown Public Hospital are already designing a program to be adopted by the judicial and prison system so that offenders who require mental health assistance can access such services readily and in a systematic way. Nondal anticipates that the bill will be ready for the National Assembly when this session resumes in October. As the buck and forth continues over the appointment of Candace Nelson as acting town clerk, the local government commission chairman has written to the mayor of Georgetown informing him that the appointment is binding. The chairman stated that at Monday's meeting, the commission confirmed Nelson's appointment by a majority vote. The appointment was made a few weeks ago. However, the Georgetown mayor and councillors rejected the appointment as it was originally made unilaterally by the chairman. Now following the ratification of the earlier decision, the LGC chairman said he expects that the mayor and councillors will give Nelson their full cooperation. Yesterday, three men were arrested after they attempted to have a nurse at the Breeden Hoop Health Center illegally stop their Blanc vaccine booklets. The police reported that the nurse became suspicious of the men as they were not authorized to possess the booklets. In addition to the blue vaccination books, the police said they searched the third suspect's vehicle and found one black and gold stethoscope, 17 blank sick leave forms, which were all stamped with the West Emerara Regional Hospital stamp, and another vaccination booklet which was not stamped, but carried the name and address of a person. They also searched the man's home and found one diabetes testing kit and one blood pressure testing machine in the man's bedroom. The cops suspect all of the items were stolen. Are you one of the chosen few that benefits from duty free? If yes, then check out these amazing vehicles that just arrived at Best Buy Auto Sales. This 2016 Toyota Harrier Grand Sport Edition, this 2014 Range Rover Volt, and this 2016 Lexus RX 200T are all on sale. They are all fully loaded and come with all modern features. Call the WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit their showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 La Marche, and tell them the Rico sent you to get in on a sweet deal. Over in Burbies, one man was caught on tape torching three vehicles belonging to an East Kanji businessman named Dudnop Moses. Around 8 p.m. last night, Moses witnessed the blaze before arming himself and running outside. The New Amsterdam Fire Service responded, but the blaze was already extinguished by the time they reached. The police are currently looking for the arsonist. One security guard in Perica is apparently so serious about enforcing the mask mandate that he ended up shooting an errant customer who refused to wear one. Yesterday afternoon, 57-year-old Mohammed Faisal attempted to enter the Golden Well Chinese supermarket without a face mask when the 57-year-old security guard prevented him from entering, thus triggering an argument between the two. The man left and later returned with the cutlass, brandishing it at the security guard. When the guard saw Faisal with the cutlass, he shot him in the leg. Faisal was admitted to the hospital in a stable condition. But I guess he'll wear his mask now. Ha ha! It's now time for today's run report. 
Today, the nation recorded 207 new cases. There are now 602 persons dead, 23 persons in the ICU, and 1,465 persons in home isolation. The total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 24,713. So please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds, and remember to give six feet of space between you and others. Don't miss the grand 50% off sale and get a free one-month Digicel Prime bundle plan. Available at City Mall, Starbuck Square, Regent and Light Street, Massey Turkine, and Massey Providence. Shop early, limited stocks available. Over 4,000 parents have already granted permission for their children to be vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. Thus far, the government has received 146,250 doses, which is more than enough to cover the nation's 58,000 students who are above the age of 12 years old. You know, seeing as they have to take two of those shots, so you do the math. The Education Ministry said the government is not making it a requirement for children to be vaccinated against the Rona to enter the school, but it is nevertheless urging parents to grant permission for their children to be vaccinated. Close to 12 inches of water swamped households at Stanley Town on the west bank of Demerara during yesterday morning's high tide after the coca attendant failed to show up to close the sluice doors. The water level varied in the community based on topography. However, most families suffered damage to appliances and furnishings and were left with a big cleanup. I'm the chairman of the NDC. I got a call that the door wasn't closed. They didn't close the door properly or didn't close it at all. So when I came here, I see the door and then guys was trying to jack it down. But definitely the door left open. That, what, that door didn't stop or it left open. There's no doubt about it. So that is the situation. You know, people, a lot of folk in here flood out. One gentleman, his apparently like his piglets and so. You get rid yeah, of one other guy. Stuck, there's the second, the second time, the, the, the second time meeting so, them so damaging. I mean, areas, complaining yeah. to nobody. The same drop card is coming from the last the man walking at the coca minga, no business with no politician, no police or nobody. I got to me investment. Cause when it go down the drain, nobody paying it more back. Me business for nobody. Cause them can't pay people 2200 dollars when the time come and getting them away from the family. Then when they're done, the people got no man doing that kind of stuff. You got to pay the people proper so the people could look at the work proper. Cause when they do this, every fucking body in the village are fucking up. Me don't business with nobody. Me business about me and what I invest. I work hard for investment thing. After waking up all for move all the let them out to the pen. Approximately 60 households were affected in total. And now for our stupid news of the day. This one is a long one, but I feel it needs to be said. You know what I think is stupid? The fact that we are rushing to reopen schools when we clearly are not ready. Months ago, the government claimed that they will not open school until the number of infections go down. Now the infection rate is surging yet again, but the children must go back to school. Or it shouldn't be too surprising that we're receiving conflicting messages as even the teachers and the ministry are not on the same page. And from the looks of it, they've been at odds with each other for months. So if I were a parent, I would not feel confident that everyone there would be able to effectively teach my child in a pandemic setting. Speaking of the children, they definitely won't be emotionally and mentally prepared for school. They've been out of school for over a year and a half. Any teacher will tell you getting a classroom to listen after summer break is a task. Now what about after 16 months away from class? Other nations that have restarted in-person schooling have already recorded a jump in juvenile delinquency and the like. Why? Well, mainly it's because the pandemic has inflicted psychological trauma on us all. Now, 24,000 persons have tested positive in Guyana, and probably thousands more who either didn't bother to get tested or died without receiving a test meaning that these children have lost loved ones. Teachers have lost loved ones. Parents have lost loved ones. All of them to an invisible enemy that you must always be on guard for. Will the ministry provide mental health specialists to emotionally prepare the children and stuff a lot? You know who's also unprepared? Many parents. Some of them are now unemployed or underemployed, meaning that they now have to find money to send their children to school. I doubt the ministry's 90 US dollar check will go very far with this. Many of these children are now undernourished because of the reduced incomes, and undernourishment is terrible for your immune system. It doesn't matter too much when the children are at home, 
but it does matter a lot when they'll be shoved into a room with 20 other children who came from, well, Lord knows where. Will the ministry be feeding the children to ensure that they are actually healthy enough to learn? Even if they do that, will they be able to truly monitor the children to make sure they are keeping safe and sanitary? Imagine for a second, you will send your son to school with a Spider-Man mask, and he will come home with a Superman mask. And when you ask him, whose mask is that? He'll say, me you know, I traded it with some buy at school. What happens then? Or, let's even consider the fact that children can still catch COVID on the way to school, as they have to ride on overcrowded minibuses. Will the ministry be providing transportation? These are just a few of the reasons why I say that the Ministry of Education needs to put a pause on rushing to revert to normal and actually try to engage parents, teachers and students, and education experts on forming an innovative curriculum for our nation's students. Otherwise, we are desperately trying to uphold an already broken education system. And if you ask me, I think that is pretty stupid. You there, Mr. Truck Owner! A great place to get high-quality truck parts and engine spares for low prices is Powered Automotive. They stock parts for DAS, Freightliner, Mach, International, and all models of Cummins engines. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Eccles or call them on 697-0171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Guyana. Real team. Moving on to our uncut news views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So, you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, should we add any segments to the news? Deslin Andrea White said, yes, another section would be lovely, like the weird news of the day you used to do. Angie the Atheist says, maybe you can pick one question from the viewer and have a small segment on the topic. It will help with our interactions. Ooh, I like that. I really might use that. Troy DeWeaver says, you guys should put a new segment called What is the Government Up To Now? Ah, I really like that one, Troy. And finally, Carl Samoir said simply, Bro, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Beautiful words indeed, Carl. Thank you. I wish I could have read all your suggestions, but we don't have the time. But, of course, I read them and we're keeping them all in mind. So, look out for them. So, for tonight's question. Do you think it's time for students to go back to face-to-face -to -face instruction, or would you suggest a different education model? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bulford saying good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here. Or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!